This is a GMAT 650 to 700 level problem solving question. It's from algebra, linear equations and absolute values. By throwing in absolute value into the mix, this question has become that much more interesting than what it would have otherwise been without the absolute value in place. Let's get started. If x is greater than 0, how many integer values of x, y will satisfy the equation 5x plus 4 modulus of y equals 55? Before we set about solving, let's just spend a minute on understanding something very unique about it. See, invariably we'll know that if you have two variables, we need to have two equations. That's a necessary condition, not a sufficient condition to get a unique value. We have only one equation. Obviously, that means that we are not going to get a unique solution. That's why this question is asking how many values are possible. We are not trying to find a single solution. How do we do it if we have only one equations? There could be infinite values which will make it work. There are certain added conditions which are given, which will help us zero in it to probably a finite number of values if choice E is not the correct answer. What are those things? One, it says that X is positive. Second, it says that what are the integer values that X and Y can take to make this happen? Now, having got this idea that we are not going to get a unique solution, because to get a unique solution, you need two equations to get with two variables. That's a necessary condition. Even then, we are not sure we'll get a definite answer, a unique answer. So keep that perspective in mind. So we're going to get multiple values which are possible. Our idea is to figure out how many such values are possible. First step to doing this is let's keep this four modulus of y on the left-hand side. So four modulus of y equals 55 minus 5x. I'm going to draw three inferences based on information that we have put it together with some other information and then let's start listing down possible values. The first and foremost thing, we have four modulus of y on the left hand side. Modulus of y is always going to be a non-negative number. Modulus of 22.3 is 22.3. Modulus of minus 22.3 is a 22.3. So modulus essentially keeps the positive, the magnitude of it. Modulus of zero equals zero. So it can be a zero or it can be a positive number. It can never be negative. If modulus of y is positive, 4 mod is non-negative, 4 modulus of y will also be non-negative, which means 55 minus 5x will also be non-negative. So that is the first inference. So 55 minus 5x could be 0 or 55 minus 5x could be a positive number. Second inference, for integer values of y, modulus of y will be an integer. 4 times modulus of an integer, 4 modulus of y is 4 times modulus of y, 4 times an integer, is going to be a multiple of 4. 4 modulus of y is a multiple of 4, then 55 minus 5x is a multiple of 4. So it's inference number 2 that we have drawn. 55 is divisible by 5, which means that 55 is a multiple of 5. 5x is also divisible by 5, which means 5x is a multiple of 5, which means 55 minus 5x is going to be a multiple of 5. So third inference we are drawing is 55 minus 5x is a multiple of 5. When will that happen? When x is an integer. Because 5x is divisible by 5 only when x is an integer. Here we are trying to find out integer values for x and y, which means x is an integer is satisfied here. Let's take inference 2 and 3 together. From inference 2, we know that 55 minus 5x is a multiple of 4. From inference number 3, for integer values of x, 55 minus 5x is a multiple of 5. So 55 minus 5x is a multiple of 4 and a multiple of 5, then it obviously boils down to the fact that it's a common multiple to 4 and 5 or it's a multiple of 20. Let's, from inferences 2 and 3, this is what we have deduced. Let's take this with some other information that we have here and put down the following conditions that x and y should satisfy. First, x is positive given in the question. Second, it's an integer value for x and y that we are looking for which should satisfy the condition that 55 minus 5x is a multiple of 20. That's what from inferences 2 and 3 we drew in the last slide. And one other important condition, because 4 modulus of y is equal to 55 minus 5x and modulus of y cannot be negative, 55 minus 5x is non-negative. Let's list down such non-negative values of 55 minus 5x, which are multiples of 20. Note one thing, if x is a positive number, x is a positive integer, 5x is going to be positive. 55 minus a positive number will have values which are less than 55, right? For example, 55 minus even a 5 into 1 is going to give us a value which is less than 55. So you're looking for 55 minus 5x, such values which are less than 55, which are multiples of 20 and which will keep x as a positive number. And x should be an integer. Let's get started. 55 minus 5x, what is it? We'll start from the highest possible value. 40 is the largest value 
which is less than 55, which is a multiple of 20. Is 55 minus 5x positive here? Certainly yes. The next number that's a multiple of 20 is a 20. I don't think we have any more positive values. So these are the only two possible values that 55 minus 5x can take where it is positive. But note one thing, 55 minus 5x is not necessarily positive. It is, it can also be zero. The question says that 55 minus 5x has to be non-negative. Non-negative means it could be a zero or it could be a positive number. We listed down the positive numbers. Temptation is to stop there. But look at it, is zero a multiple of 20? Certainly, zero is a multiple of any number. So we should not miss out this value. So these are all the values that 55 minus 5x takes. Correspondingly, what will be the values that x will take? If 55 minus 5x is equal to 40, 5x will be equal to 15, x will be a 3. Is x positive? Yes. So we've got 55 minus 5x positive or non-negative multiple of 20, x is positive, all conditions 1 and 2 satisfied. If 55 minus 5x equals 20, 5x will be equal to 35, which means x equals 70, 7. 55 minus 5x is non-negative, multiple of 20, x is positive. This also satisfies all conditions. 55 minus 5x equals 0, which means 5x equals 55, translates to x being 11. Does it satisfy all conditions? Is it a multiple of 20? Yes, 0 is a multiple of 20. Is it non-negative? Yes, that condition is satisfied. Is x positive? That is also satisfied. So how many values do we have for x? We have three values for x, which are 3, 7 and 11. The temptation is to go and mark answer choice 3. There are three values for x. Correspondingly, there will be three values of y. Choice 1, incidentally, happens to be three values. Quite often, we would be completing the question at this point and go and mark and that would end up becoming incorrect. Why so? 55 minus 5x has got three values, which are 40, 20 and 0. Those are the values that four modulus of y takes. So four modulus of y is a 40. Modulus of y is a 10. Modulus of y is a 10. Y could take two values, which are 10 and minus 10. So for each of these values, we'll have two possible values for y, which means that we have three values for x. So there will be six values for y. So x comma y will have a total of six values. That is again the answer choice two, which will also end up being incorrect. Let's see why. If 4 modulus of y is a 20, modulus of y is equal to 5. So y is therefore a 5 or a minus 5. Good till this point. If 4 modulus of y equals 0, then modulus of y is a 0. Modulus of y is a 0, there is no negative 0, there is only one value which is plus 0. So we do not have 6 values for y, we have only 5 possible values for y. So how many possible combinations do we have for x and y? These are the following combinations. It could be a 3 comma 10, it could be a 3 comma minus 10. Two values when x equals 3. Two values when x equals 7. 7 comma 5 and 7 comma minus 5. I've written the minus 5 first, so it doesn't matter. The last one is when x equals 11, 11 comma 0. So five possible values are available for x and y, satisfying all of the conditions that are mentioned, right? These are the values. These two have two, two values for y, positive and negative. When modulus of y equals 0, y can take only one value, which is equal to 0. So these are the five values listed down. Choice C is the correct answer. Before you leave, do a couple of things. One, sign up as a trial user at wzko.in slash core. Get started with this topic, statistics, right? That's a free topic. Statistics and average is a very good topic to kickstart your GMAT preparation. Once you've completed that, once you're used to the teaching methodology, UI, UX, sign up, pay up, and get other topics unlocked. And two other things which you can do. One, Subscribe to this channel, youtube.com slash visaco, so that you'll get notified of all new videos that we all upload. Lastly, there is one other thing which one can do over and above this. You can join as a member of this channel by paying a small monthly fee to YouTube every month. There are certain member-only perks which are available over and above what is freely available to everyone who accesses this channel. To know what those perks are, which keep we keep adding new perks every now and then, click on the join button in the home page of the channel. We have listed on all the perks that are those. Those perks will help anyone preparing for the GMAT kickstart to their GMAT preparation. So if that seems to be interesting to you, you can sign up and become a member of this channel. Best wishes for your GMAT preparation.